Hey guys, uh, welcome to a somewhat unconventional episode of Film And. Um, we are calling this series of episodes in the coming months Film Asterisk, since this isn't official Film And canon, but these are just some episodes we're doing. Um, Connor cannot join me today. He is in, he's back in Indiana at home, so I will actually be joined by my sister, Julia. Hello. Hi, I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much for agreeing to help out with this. Of and uh, we thought a really good one to start off with, if we're talking movies, is one we've both wanted to mm-hmm. see for a while. You've yep. seen it. I have um, seen it you saw before it you. Before me. Mm-hmm. And this is actually the 2019 Oscars Best Picture winner, Parasite. Yep. Uh, Bong Joon-ho, directed by... Um, good film um <laughs> we literally just finished watching it this is your second viewing yes this is my view. first viewing mm-hmm. so uh let's just get some thoughts uh what do you think well I, it was i mean the first time i watched it had such a huge impression on me i would say because um i i had absolutely no idea what the plot was about i didn't yeah. even know that it was an oscar nominee at all. Really? Um, okay. I was living in Bastia, Corsica at the time, and they had a small film festival going around at a bunch of the theaters mm-hmm. in, in Bastia. And so basically, uh, they were just hand picking the most popular films from around the world. And one of them was Parasite. And then I got invited by one of my fellow teaching assistants um, who I was working with at the time to go and see it. And that was about it. I knew it was Parasite. Um, I knew it was a South Korean film. And uh, yeah, and so I just went in with absolutely no prior information. Yeah. And I thought it was it was incredible because, um, well, I mean, I don't want to spoil anything until we get into it, but it's a very... Yeah, real quick, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. on Film And, we do have mm-hmm. a, a uh, kind of a system. Uh-huh. We have a spectrum of mm-hmm. the amount of spoilers we give, yeah. whether it's light spoilers, medium spoilers, uh-huh. or heavy spoilers. Uh-huh. So I think we need to go heavy spoilers. Ha- I here. think we're going to go heavy, very heavy, <laughs> weighty spoilers here. Because otherwise, what else would we talk about? Exactly. We can't dance We've, around it. <laughs> me and Connor have done light spoilers before, and it's difficult because it's yeah. usually when we do rankings. We're mm-hmm. like, oh, this is my mm-hmm. favorite. Right. Like directorial debut, I think we did some yeah. there. So we're going to go uh, real quick, everybody listening heavy spoilers if you haven't seen it just pause right now go and watch it it's two hours and 12 minutes go watch it and then come back and listen to all thoughts (laughs) so Mm -hmm. okay moving on anything else just general Um, thoughts before right so my general perspective after i saw the film for the first time was that it felt like it was a Um, strongly divided film Mm -hmm. in half because I feel like for you know I would say the first half of the film you think it's going in one direction Mm -hmm. and then almost immediately with very little suggestion beforehand it goes in a completely wildly different direction yeah you know because I think it could probably be described as a thriller like a psychological thriller probably as it is but a good portion of the film you don't necessarily think that that's where it's going Mm -hmm. and i think what i loved about it so much is that um it was so elegantly done yeah presented in a way that was surprising but not you know there was still a little bit of subtlety to it that i appreciated yeah absolutely um i think this definitely falls for me in the category of films where um the film itself doesn't really talk down to the audience Mm. Uh, plot mm-hmm. wise or tension wise mm-hmm. or it, it really doesn't r- rely on any um completely overplayed tropes i think yes. the idea of i mean the whole concept of hiding mm-hmm. and sheltering 
mm-hmm. I think, in this film is, is really interesting. And uh, mostly, I mean, I think this film can't really escape some of the, I think, some of the cliches of, like, you know, hiding from people. Mm-hmm. Especially that one sequence when um, the family's underneath the table. Mm-hmm. That's, I mean, it's well done. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But it's it's not something we haven't seen before, you know? It's right. something we've seen again and again and again. It's kind of mm-hmm. like a, it's a very natural way for an audience mm-hmm. member mm-hmm. to uh, be shown tension. Yeah. The tension of, exactly. I'm hiding mm-hmm. really close and you can't see me. Because, yeah, that's what I feel like it not, it doesn't feel forced. Not much yeah. of the movie feels forced. And I think that's why it appeals to me so much is that it it moves through scene to scene in such a methodical way, yeah. I suppose, if you could put it like that. I or think, yeah, one of the, the strong Progressive. Like, I mean, it's progressive. Yeah. But. I think what really helps it out, mm-hmm. at least this film for me, is the fact that the there's a big concept of the plan. Right. You know, mm-hmm. the family's yeah. plan. Yeah. And that's what we're seeing, and that's what drives the movie for the whole time. Mm-hmm. And the fact that it stays so focused mm-hmm. is, I think, one of the strongest points of the movie, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, of course, this is my mm-hmm. first time watching it. Yep. Um, and yeah, I pretty much felt the same thing. Mm-hmm. It was mm-hmm. It's pretty good. It's, uh, yep. I, I'm really happy it won Best Picture. That's well, really yeah. cool. Um, I know. And best director, honestly, you look at uh, I mean, you look at the it won four Academy Awards. It won uh, best foreign picture, uh, director, original screenplay, which I thought was really cool. I was not expecting for it to win that, mm-hmm. and then a, a best picture. So a lot, a lot of these bigger awards, and I think I mean it makes sense it didn't win actor or actress because like a lot of these people aren't known in mm-hmm. Hollywood. They're mm-hmm. not, it they don't get the reception. Right. Well, you see, know. now that leads me to a question for you, because um, as honored as I am to be on the show with you, I feel like I have a pretty, shall we say, pedestrian understanding of oh, film. Oh, come on. <laughs> I mean, sure. <laughs> I, like, I've seen plenty of films, but I don't really have a lot of scholarly or academic or even just, you know, cinephilic, if you will. Gotcha. <laughs> okay, yeah. I can, no, I can understand in that, it. I'm yeah. just like, you know, right. whatever. Um, but for in my mind, for so very long the Oscars awards have been uh, like d- exclusively for Hollywood movies, Hollywood actors, Hollywood directors, which yeah. by extension of that is very often American and very rarely, you know, say um, from the UK yeah. or Canada, maybe, but um, I think English speaking, English speaking, yeah. right? Exactly. English speaking predominantly. And, and for me, in addition to the fact that it not only revolves around that circle that I've felt for so long, the movies that get selected mm-hmm. for nomination tend to be the blockbusters, yeah. the big names, right? And yeah. so with those two thoughts in mind, you know, as much as I feel that Parasite deserves every honor and an Oscar, um, I just wonder... Like, how did that decision come about to bring in a foreign film? Because obviously, I know they have an award for a foreign film, mm-hmm. and they'll include I mean, they, that. They, they have but a I, category mm-hmm. for it, so right. it's not surprising that Parasite mm-hmm. would win Best Foreign uh, right, Feature. Right, exactly. But the fact that it can cross that threshold, I right. think, is impressive. And so, I'm wondering, you know? was that was there like some sort of change in the Academy to to allow that to happen, or was that always a possibility that just never came to fruition? Or I think it's difficult to get in the minds of uh, of the Academy, okay. you know? Because I was just, I was so, I mean, I was so like, wow, finally they've chosen like a real film that think, deserves to be like, you know, honored. Like but a lot of I don't the people know. I talked mm-hmm. to in the in film circles had that same like sigh of relief, like mm-hmm. finally a real film. Yeah, well, that sounds, finally that they, sounds kind of not it, that sounds rude <laughs> and pedantic, but that, that is rude. Just, <laughs> No, but, but like, I mean, I like to think, though, you know, the measuring stick by which the Academy uses to give the awards out are, as I said, within that realm of Hollywood movies, which yeah, have a very absolutely. specific sort of, I don't know if you want to say trope, but, you know, a certain genre to, or the way in which it gets manufactured yeah. and produced to the public. Y- y- I mean, it's I- not necessarily, you know, the, they're like, for instance, if you look at other film festivals that mm-hmm. exist... I feel like there's a pretty big divide in the type of films that get shown because yeah. you have one, say, at like the Cannes Film Festival that are 
usually more artistic, usually mm-hmm. foreign. Yeah, usually absolutely. It's, it's, from a, it's, varying it's a global directors, varying festival. Men, yeah. it, right, it's a global festival. And that makes sense. You know, a parasite one can, and that you can see seems it logical. Get, yeah. But for the Academy Awards, it makes me think, how'd that happen? Yeah. Now, I don't, I have absolutely zero disagreements with it, but I just find it so intriguing that it monumentally took over the awards yeah. this year. It wasn't even just kind of like, oh, wow, it won Best Screenplay. That's kind of surprising. Yeah. No, like, no, best more or less director, almost dominated. Best picture. I mean, it was... The big, big ones. It was the talk of the film town, if you will. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's just... That show, goes to show the power of this film on a global mm. context. You know, like, overall, mm. you know, you see the, the, the big picture of this film. <clears throat> um that like this this can translate this kind of story uh, this kind of this, uh, idea of class struggle hiding and kind of in a way scamming as well i think is a global narrative that people mm-hmm. can get on board with and mm-hmm. relate to and the fact that uh this story was put under the lens of such a cuz i don't want to say independent film but a more outside the industry film with um really eye catching cinematography intentional directing and like really you know impactful performances from the actors and actresses i mean you can see why it made it as far as it did so um i think that's a good place to leave it for now uh we're gonna go to a quick psa break when we come back we're gonna uh, do a, a, a deeper dive into some of the more specific parts of the movie parasite okay Being around too much loud noise like a leaf blower or rock concert can cause permanent hearing loss. And once it's gone, you can't get it back. Hearing loss is the third most common chronic health condition in the U.S. Almost twice as many people report hearing loss as diabetes or cancer. The louder a sound is, and the longer you're exposed to it, the more likely it will damage your hearing. Repeated exposure to noise can cause stress, anxiety, depression, high blood pressure, heart disease, and many other problems. Hearing loss from loud noise at home and in the community can be prevented. Avoid noisy places. Use earplugs, protective earmuffs, or noise-canceling headphones when near loud noises. Keep the volume down when watching TV or listening to music and using earbuds or headphones. Get your hearing checked and ask your healthcare provider how to protect your hearing from noise. To learn more, visit cdc.gov slash vital signs. <laughs> All right. Uh, welcome back, guys. Um, thank you for tuning in uh, to Film mm-hmm. Asterisk. We were, we're talking about Parasite, and we're doing a, a deeper dive into some things, and we want to start uh, first off, I think, with the visuals, the cinematography, and kind of like really the visual choices of this film and i think how important it is to kind of relay that because i mean when you consider the film itself it's 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 very small it feels like a big film but it's very small there are three locations in the entire film i believe there is uh the mansion the basement underneath the mansion uh so in a way it's only two locations and uh the main family's basement house Mm -hmm. where they live that ends up getting flooded that we see but they do end up going back to it Mm -hmm. they they clean it up um so i think i personally just want to start off by like talking about the contrast between these three locations where you you kind of have this very um you know very urban feel a very dirty feel Mm -hmm. in, in the family's main home uh in the basement you know it's uh, it's low income. It is. It is shoestring budget, basement unit. Um, I think that really does come to a head actually in the flooding scene. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. where where they come in and and they realize like the kind of the class separation is mm-hmm. literally shown visually yes. in the fact of it drowning their actual lives. Mm-hmm. While they've tried to get away from that so far, so far, so far, it's still their infrastructure. It's still their base mm-hmm. of living. So when they they can't really escape that, you know, which I think is well, they're why trying they're, to. they're trying to. But then you realize in the flooding scene that that mm-hmm. can't happen. They're not there yet. They can't just take this rich family's well, life. I, one thing I noticed in, in the film when we're talking about locations um, 
Right. So, like, as you said, we have the, like, the sub-basement where the family lives. You have the mansion, and Mm -hmm. then you have the basement of the mansion. Yes. And I think what's interesting to me is the physical levels upon which they exist. Yeah. Right? So, you have the family's sub-basement in the town, kind of in the less, I don't know, like, you know, it's very, it's not, like, gentrified. Yeah. The poor part of town. And they're in down in the basement below the ground but they have a window and they can see up and out yeah which i think reflects their personal desires like to um to bring about the plan yeah. that they have exactly to, to aspire for more because they can see theoretically you know what they can aspire to yeah and then interestingly you know the um the mansion is on that hill and pretty much mm-hmm. every time you see a character exit or enter they're going up and down like this Mm -hmm. really big hill and even at the end i remember i don't know if this has i don't know this might be the translation um to english so i don't know if it's accurate um in the in the korean but he says that he climbs up the mountain yeah right to go back to the home after everything's happened yeah to look past like oh the new family that's the new family that's living there and everything so um, so again, you, you kind of have that, um, aspect of like the, the physical ascending upwards only to go downwards. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So you basically are ascending up only to have a very steep decline. And that decline is the basement in the mansion. Yes. Which has no windows. You cannot see up, out or in. You have no sense of time. You have it's no sense of place. Gray cement. Gray cement. Yeah. It's it just does nothing. feel like an other right. worldly scene, right. you know, exactly. especially when we have that initial reveal Mm -hmm. of the maid going down who really becomes the linchpin of the whole second Mm -hmm. act of the film is the the old housekeeper coming in Mm -hmm. to like uh give food to her husband yeah which is just insane Mm -hmm. an insane reveal Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah spoiler spoilers yes (laughs) whoops sorry about that um but yeah real quick guys there's there's a basement that they don't know about Mm -hmm. um So I think, I mean, you touched on a really good point there, like the idea of vision, you know, Mm -hmm. where like, I think it's such a pun, not pun half intended Mm -hmm. is kind of a two way mirror situation going on, you know, where like, uh, you look at the mansion full of windows, clear glass where you can Mm -hmm. look out, but you, but they are still, um, secluded. You know, they have their privacy. I think kind of look out at the at the world, but the world doesn't necessarily ever have to come in. You know, it's very right. protective, despite the fact that when you are inside, it looks mm-hmm. quite fragile. It's just yeah. glass right. and wood, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think that's really powerful, Ooh, yeah, you know, a location to put all Especially what happens to the family later, because they think that they're impenetrable with, like, their big walls and yeah. heavy gate and security, but... Really, when you look inside, they're just fragile, yeah. easy to break and murder. Yeah. Spoiler. A big old spoiler <laughs> there. Boy, oh boy. What do we make of, um, and I think this is a good transition mm-hmm. into characters. Mm-hmm. Um, what do we make of the the husband character? Not Not the husband... The rich husband, not the poor husband who ends up being the driver, mm. but the husband in the basement mm. of the mansion mm-hmm. who has lived there for over four years at this mm-hmm. point and has pretty much gone crazy. Yep. Um, four years. Yeah. It's four like three y- months, 17 days. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <Whatever>. <laughs> he knows exactly how he knows long exactly he's been there. exactly <laughs> how many days. Um, but yeah, I mean, what what do we make of that what are, you, what are your thoughts of his character and and his kind of uh, relation to the plot because for me he doesn't seem like an uh, an initially important character but when it comes to like the climax of the film mm. that's when his importance really mm. rises mm-hmm. up yeah and, and uh, i just i'm really surprised of his like how important he ends up being so like yeah what are your thoughts on that he got some crazy eyes he does he has the crazy eyes going on like in that scene with the kid and he's eating his birthday cake 
<laughs> oh my god. Oh. It gives me chills. Yeah, that was freaky. That was super freaky. Um, with like the flashback. He's like almost like, like otherworldly, which he is, as we we're is. talking about, because you said like kind of how the basement is another world. Yeah. Totally separate from everything else, and he comes out of it, and he's like this monster. Yeah. It I is mean, he's normal. Of... I don't think they did anything to his face, but just the way that they like angled it and like saw his yeah. head like. And when he and he comes out at the end with the blood. Right, yeah, with the blood all uh, over his face, yeah. Hacking up mm-hmm. rich people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Hacking up those wealthy uh, socialites in South Korea. No, um, but um, yeah. in general, okay, I think his speech when he's talking to the um, to the poor husband, right? The, the driver, so yes. Mr. Kim, right? Mm-hmm. Mr. Kim, when he's talking to Mr. Kim, um, and he's <laughs> Mr. Kim's trying to tie him up essentially yeah. you mm-hmm. know and shut him up and everything he's kind of also asking him like well, like how can you live down here how can you exist down here and he's like it's like i was born here like i belong here this is this is where i should be yeah right and he plans on dying there like he wants to stay yeah it's not it's not a place of repute it's not a place of you know i mean it is i think probably from the outside eye it's like you know horrible and disgusting and, and oh, a yeah. terrible existence but to him you know depending on his mental faculties. He believes that, that that's where he belongs and that's yeah. where he wants to stay. And he's like willing to fight to stay. I think it's there. It's not even yeah. like, like if anything, they're almost like given the opportunity to escape, but he doesn't want to leave. Yeah. He wants to stay there. He's so tied to this system, mm-hmm. this this kind of like social class system that they've right. been put in, which I think is why the mansion and the basement all like a really powerful, just like they all just mm-hmm. a symbol. They are a microcosm of class struggle you know Mm -hmm. of like this crazed man this golem figure living in the darkness in in in, in the underground um is so used to his lifestyle Mm -hmm. of being below being beneath Mm -hmm. and kind of uh being a parasite on others Mm -hmm. that that's what's comforting he's like accepted it exactly that's life finds comfort in in having that identity rather than trying to strive for something else that Mm -hmm. may or may not be attainable which is such an interesting way for like if you reflect that back on the family Mm -hmm. you know what does that say about them because you see the father mr kim the driver the poor father ends up kind of taking his place um Mm -hmm. and spending who knows how much time we'll get to the ending we'll Mm -hmm. talk about the ending eventually but like he spends a lot of time down there Mm -hmm. we think Mm -hmm. um and kind of the idea of like you're not really sure whether he ha- he himself has accepted himself to be like I am a low class individual I will not strive for wealth because like kind of like wealth corrupts mm-hmm. you know, it corrupts absolutely mm-hmm. you know and I think does he realize that and that's why he decides to stay in the basement to like replace this other crazy husband that he himself has kind of accepted that role mm-hmm. well yeah because i feel like he he crossed a line <laughs> as you know how uh, mr uh, yeah, park mr the park line. was yes. talking about he almost crosses the line but he never does he never, he never quite, quite does he never quite does but i mean he does when eventually he, he does when he stabs the rich dad um mr park and and, the, and yeah in the chest <laughs> yep and so i think for him like realizing that he's crossed that line kind of almost breaking whatever mold of like humanity he may have had mm-hmm. to whatever degree he's kind of like oh i don't don't really know if i deserve to be in the outside world yeah. anymore slash i'm sure also part of it was like safety like he didn't want to get caught right he wanted to go to a place that was safe yeah and so he went to the basement. I think this is actually really interesting. Moving on with like the ideas of the characters in this mm-hmm. film, I think the most interesting thing is how this is such an ensemble cast. Mm-hmm. You know, you can kind of pinpoint the the Paul son, the tutor, as kind of the main character. He mm-hmm. seems like the protagonist mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. he's the protagonist at the beginning and the end. Mm-hmm. But to be honest, it kind of the protagonist role kind of switches hands Mm -hmm. so many times Mm -hmm. and i feel like there's kind of a uh a a really an ensemble feel Mm -hmm. you know leading to like we're not rooting for one character or one thing we're kind of rooting for an invisible idea of that the characters embody you Mm -hmm. know like we're not rooting for 
an individual because we know their backstory and we have like emotional investment. Mm-hmm. We're rooting for them because they are merely lower class. Mm-hmm. We are we're, we are rooting for concepts in mm-hmm. a way, really. Um, and I think that was such an interesting way to go about this. You know, when when writing this film, making this film, and having mm-hmm. people like having that leading role change so many hands because it goes between. I feel like the son, who's the tutor, the driver, the father, um, and then the mom, really, even, Mm -hmm. as the housekeeper, who ends up being the only one who kind of isn't affected that night of the flood. And the other three are, like, in the shelter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she constantly feels like she's kind of out a little bit, an outsider Mm -hmm. of the family. Yeah. And that never really comes to to a a head, you know? Mm -mm. Her character all just kind of, like fizzles it yeah. <laughs> just kind of goes off you know yeah which is she interesting doesn't even get like wounded in a particularly graphic way no or like she, she, she gets stabbed a little bit she but does not like stab not like stabbed in the heart <laughs> yeah yeah oh my god um so i think uh moving on plot <laughs> mm-hmm. thoughts <laughs> like w- kind of crazy at times some of the scenes mm-hmm. i think uh, mm-hmm. a, a scene i really want to address mm-hmm is the entire night the camp of the camping trip oh yeah that entire it's, it sequence feels like that's like the cl- cl- well it's not really it's not the climax I don't know you but say it's, it's the like climax but it's like the main the, pole the suspension mm-hmm. it's like where the most suspension is held i guess or a little bit yeah because it, cause, yeah i mean i remember when i watched it and now when you watched it you kind of had like this breath of relief when they finally escaped yeah oh my god and you were like Thank God, now they're fine. It's okay now. <laughs> it's not. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, it got worse. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know. I was just, I was impressed with that sequence that it held my attention for like over a half an hour, mm-hmm. I think. Is yeah, that whole sequence? it really grips you. It's yeah. like the entire mm-hmm. second act, basically. Yep. And it just. Because it feels like there's almost like surprise after surprise that cause more causes more and more suspense right so basically like you start off with the family doing what you totally expect them to do like you expect yeah. them hanging to be out like, hang out like the the rich family the park family is gone mm-hmm. they've gone camping they break out the you know the kim family they break out the whiskey and <laughs> snacks and the dog food by accident just hang out. um and they're <laughs> just, just like hanging get out drunk and, and enjoy right like, and they're like their... oh if we had this place if i were to like marry into the family and, which is like, interesting to be like in a way mm-hmm. uh the father does end up getting the house in a way in the basement right you know? true this is, yeah mm-hmm. yeah he does pre-basement reveal mm-hmm. that's the thing this whole reveal happens at the same uh, right like right after because you don't know about it right because then and then what happens is the old housekeeper comes yep and like that's kind of like for when i was first watching it first I had a little flick of like mm, hmm Some, something, <laughs> so, might be something off. might be wrong and i don't know like it just yeah it doesn't feel right did we I, ever figure out what happened to her face do they ever explain no, that? No, they never did. Right, because she kind of brushes it off. She's like, oh, like, you don't need to know about that Like, right I'll tell now. you later or something? And, well, and maybe it's just, like, just supposed to symbolize, like, how far she's fallen. Yeah. But was, like, maybe physically, maybe. like, metaphorically. Yeah. You know, that she was turned out. And, you know, when the Kim family is, like, hanging out and having their conversation, like they're like oh what happened to those people that we displaced like oh don't think about them like what we need help we need yeah. we need to be the ones who are who are taking advantage of the situation and then you know kind of is like put in their faces that you have like this lady that they turned out onto the streets who's like beaten up and like yeah you know looks pretty disheveled and is like manic and things like that so yeah um yeah I do find that whole sequence so intriguing Mm -hmm. because, you know, I always feel like there's a bit, this might be the fact that like this movie was built up to me so much over the past like six months. (laughs) Everyone's been like, you need to see Parasite. I'm Uh like, all right, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. But like, you're just kind of on the edge of your seat. Like you're waiting and waiting for something crazy to happen. When you (laughs) see the house, the old Mm -hmm. housekeeper come back, Mm -hmm. like ringing that doorbell, you're like, oh, here we go. And the whole Mm -hmm. thing just spirals. Like when the family comes back, that was such a cool reminder to me, like, oh my god, 
that the Polk family is coming back because of course they would come back Mm because it's raining Mm -hmm. so the camping trip is canceled like I thought that was so small with with like the thunder like like they didn't think of it the audience didn't think of it the audience is not Mm -hmm. meant to believe like oh whatever they're just gone they kind of brush off why Mm -hmm. they're gone and then when they bring that back I'm like oh good job good job (laughs) Bong Juno. and then everything falls into chaos everything because like they're all scrambling (laughs) for like the the bits they want to what they can take mm-hmm. from the family man okay so it looks like uh, we're going a bit over time with today's uh episode so we're actually going to split this into two parts um so thank you for listening part one um we will return with more fun parasite talk eventually as always i will recommend uh connor's uh letterbox again buddy i hope all is well in uh indiana uh, if you want to hear some of his thoughts on movies, especially Parasite um, and anything else, you can uh, s- uh, find his account at Cranberry18. That is C O A N D Berry18 on Letterboxd. All right. Uh, thank you. See you guys later.